George Kennard is here to talk about the Grameen Foundation. So please welcome George. Thanks, Brady. All right, so I'm George Conard. Uh, I run the MIFOS initiative at the Grameen Foundation. Grameen Technology Center is based here in Seattle. Happy to talk afterwards about how we're related to Eunice. He's on our board, was one of our founders, thanks. More importantly, I want to talk about MIFOS. So MIFOS is an open source software platform for the microfinance industry. Raises the question, what is microfinance? So if you don't know, quick primer, microfinance at its core is very small loans for the very poor, primarily in the developing world, giving them access to capital to do entrepreneurial kinds of things, start businesses, feed their family, and help get out of poverty. Now this is a big problem. There are a billion people around the world living on less than a dollar a day. There are more than three billion living on less than two dollars a day. About 100 million of them are reached by microfinance today. So microfinance needs to scale up. It's a very powerful tool in the fight against poverty. In order to scale, though, they need good access to a technology infrastructure, and the market for technology and microfinance today just doesn't work. Only about 10% of the microfinance institutions, MFIs, I'll call them throughout this, use commercial or packaged software. The rest of them either don't have a system or they've got some homegrown, crusted together thing back in a back room that doesn't really work for them things that they need in a system. Flexibility so they can add new products and services, adapt to whatever their local regulatory environment is, and also adapt different methodologies for doing microfinance. There are lots of different ways to do it, different parts of the world. They need really good support. So one example that I use a lot, today there's a company in Guatemala that tries to support microfinance institutions in places like Tunisia or the Philippines. They don't speak the same language. They're 10 time zones away. They don't understand what's going on locally. We need to build a network of local technology providers for microfinance in places around the world. Innovation is another piece of it that's, that's needed. There are lots of cool things like mobile banking coming into the microfinance space. None of that can scale up to all the microfinance institutions around the world because nobody has the same system or any kind of standards in place. That's the problem that we're trying to solve with MIFOS. So MIFOS has been around for a few years. Uh, we launched the, the first release last fall. It is fundamentally a web-based application for microfinance institutions to use to manage their loan portfolios, savings accounts, things like that. If you want to know more about the, the software itself, you can go to the website, which is listed at the end. What I want to talk about a little bit are some of the mistakes we've made along the way, some of the challenges we're facing, some of the open questions, get you a little bit interested in this. And if you want to know more or want to get more involved, there are ways to do that. So mistake number one that we ran into, we had this idealistic idea that there would be this groundswell of volunteer developers and microfinance institutions all around the world who are going to write all of the code for this thing, maintain it forever. Doesn't work. Um, we're trying to build community, and that's a good thing, but we need to build a core development team, and that's one of the things that I'm working on right now in, in hiring people up. But that raises the question, where should the developers sit? Should they sit here in Seattle? Should they be somewhere else, maybe out in the world where the users are? The way that we're approaching that now is to build a dev team here in Seattle and then regional development centers in places like South Africa, uh, India, and places like that around the world. Question of when to innovate very quickly. Microfinance institutions, there's a lot of sexy stuff like my mobile banking out there that people get really excited about. They need to get core systems in place first, and that's one of the lessons that we've been trying to carry out into the microfinance industry to try to teach people. Support is something that I nailed uh, or harped on a little bit before, but the question is, do those companies exist in places like Cambodia and Malawi to be able to provide good technology support to microfinance institutions? If they don't, how do we build them? How do we help get them trained up? Uh, picking the right partners, the first microfinance institution that was deploying MIFOS in India tripled in size during the course of deployment. Let, let's just say that's a bad idea. It introduces way too many variables. Don't do it. Writing good code. So good code is important for any software project, right? Closed project, open project. Really important in the open source world so that new developers coming in can actually have some good examples to follow, understand what was written before them, and be able to actually extend. I'm going to skip this slide. It's self-explanatory. And so you, you, you want to have good code that other developers can follow, but also a modular architecture so that developers coming in don't have to understand all 250,000 lines of your code if they want to add one piece of functionality. That, as it turns out, if you don't architect it well from the beginning, is not easy. It's a problem that we're still trying to work on. Here's an interesting question. The answer, very quickly, is no. The users that we've got, microfinance institutions, want kick-ass software, they want kick-ass support, and if open source is a way to get the friction out of the system to enable that for them, great. Otherwise, they really don't care about it. Finally, there's, there's a bunch of open questions around something like MIFOS about how it works going forward. Are we donor-funded forever? So we've raised a couple of million dollars to support it so far. 
My answer is no. I think that Mifos and something like it can be a true double bottom line company. We're doing good in the world. I think that there is a profit model around that to help us become sustainable. It's one of the things we're trying to do. Lots of interesting technical challenges, lots of interesting business challenges. If you want to know more or if you want a job, and particularly if you want to be an engineering manager for me, come and find me afterwards or go to any of these sites uh, to get more information. I think it's one of the coolest things that uh, we're doing in, in, in the microfinance space right now. There's really the opportunity to transform the industry and in doing so, really get out and make a difference in the fight against poverty around the world. Thanks.